run. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. The time to find like <laughs> it's so big here. Um, so I'm Robin um, from Paris originally, um, and I'm here to present you about what we do uh, in my company, basically, which is called Common. Uh, and yeah, in one sentence, we are a cooperative for circular electronics. So what does that mean? Um, so yeah, as you know, um, we still are in, generally speaking, a linear business model, which means exploitation, production, distribution, and then we throw things out and we hope <laughs> that they are recycled, but actually for e-waste, uh, only 20% of e-waste are collected. So I'm not speaking about recycled, collected. So um, there is uh, problems, of course, at each and every step of, of this business model, and particularly with uh, electronic because uh, e-waste is also the faster growing flow of, of waste, actually. And we have a big problem with uh, resources. Uh, not speaking about uh, environment and working condition. Um, there's a problem with resources. It's for indium. I don't know, do you know what is indium? What does it is for? No? I don't have any specialist about uh, raw material here, no. Indium, it's for, it's to make the, the screen, uh, the touch screen, right? To make the screen responsive. And as you can see here, uh, we will reach the production peak in 2030. So it's almost tomorrow, right? So how do we do? Do you have a solution for that? What do we do when we have no indium no more? Come back to Blackberry. Uh, <laughs> so I think that the brainstorm, like, yeah, well. So some people, they say, when I ask this question, sometimes people say recycling, which could make sense. Uh, the problem is uh, when you look in detail, um, the actual technology that we use for recycling. Um, can you see indium? Indium is here. So it means indium at the maximum of the current technology, we can get 10% back. In reality, it's more 1 to 2%. So sadly, uh, recycling is not yet a solution because, uh, you know, the, the technology is not good, good enough. And because most of the time we don't have modular devices, we put the old devices in the mixer, and then we try to, to take back the raw materials with chemical processes. And uh, we are very good at taking back plastic, but indium, uh, because it's too small, it's completely you know, diluted with other things. Um, yeah, so you know, it's just greenwashing for the moment when Apple tells you that they're recycling, they're recycling plastic. Um, so one thing which is important to understand is that um, um, the problem with the linear business model that uh, those big companies, the producers, how do they make money? They sell devices, right? But uh, in Europe, the market is already saturated. You can see here, uh, we've reached a peak, and now each year there is less, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't grow no more. Because 90% of the people in Europe, they already have a smartphone, a computer, sometimes two, sometimes three, you know, sometimes a lot in their cupboard. Uh, and, but the, the, the producers, they still need to make money, right? They, they still need to sell. And how, you, how do you sell, how do you keep on selling on a market which is already completely saturated? Any answer? Plan obsolescence. You have no choice. Either you um, diversify your, your, your business model, you know, like Google selling data, etc., or you use plan obsolescence. And the more the market is saturated, the more you have to use plan obsolescence so that 
as a consumer, at some point they need to, to buy again. Can you hear me well? It's not perfect, right? Uh, more way? Um, not in front, like here? Like that? Can you still hear me? Yeah, okay. Okay, better, indeed. Um, so yeah, and how, how do we, it's, it's like a trap if you want this business model where you, you have to keep on selling, the market is already saturated, so you make everything you can so that people, they have to buy again, right? Uh, they have three levels of uh, pl um, plan obsolescence, material, so you glue the battery, you know, so you can change your battery, you have to buy a new phone. Software, you install new uh, operating system, and you know, on the old phone, it's too, too demanding, so you can't use WhatsApp anymore on your phone, you have to buy a new one. And marketing, that we all know. Um, just an example of hardware and software, plan obsolescence. Uh, in France now, we have this uh, indice de reparabilité, so reparability index, you know. And so you see the difference between a fair phone, which is a modular phone, and the iPhone. Uh, the fair phone, you can open it, fix it yourself. Uh, the iPhone, it's more difficult. And here you have plan obsolescence, right? With uh, Apple having 20, 20 models since uh, 2013, even more now, it's not updated. And you can see uh, the note, Apple have been fined 25 million euro for deliberate, deliberately slowing down older iPhones model. So it's called uh, software plan obsolescence and it's forbidden. And so Apple had to pay for that. Um, yeah, and that's a, a little slide about uh, how much a phone is used, how long a phone is used nowadays, and how long, you know, to offset the carbon emissions, etc. should a phone last at least. So, as you can see, the average is uh, three years, no? I think it goes slowly to four years, because the devices are, you know, more and more expensive. But ideally, the minimum would be 25 years. So, you see, we are far away. Um, and that's what we try to do at Common. Our goal is to make the devices last as long as at least 25 years. So um, uh, that's interesting. That is interesting because if you just change the, the business model from a linear business model to a leasing business model, you change completely the intensive. At Common, we are a cooperative and we lease eco-design devices, right? So we are leasing the devices. So the client, they pay every month. For that, all is included in the price, of course. But so, if you think about it, we earn money because the devices last, right? When new device break, we have to replace it, we lose money. It's exactly the opposite, right? Um, and on the, tree, on the tree level, like on the modularity, so we have to do exactly the opposite of plan obsolescence, if we want uh, to earn money, basically. So on the material level, we have to work with uh, modular devices that we can fix easily. On the software level, we have to use with alternative battery uh, operating system, uh, Linux and Lineage OS and EOS, etc., so that we can flash the, the device, so we can still use them on old devices. And on the marketing level, we have uh, make the prices so that the longest you keep the devices, the less you pay. So you see those three levels, we do exactly the opposite. Um, and of course, the leasing has also the advantage of you know, collecting 100% of the zero e-waste. Because if you pay for a device, you're not going to leave it in your cupboard, you know? you're going to send it back because you don't want to pay for nothing. Um, so we combine modularity of the products and hardware as a service, which means because the devices, they stay the property of the cooperative, the cooperative has interest to, you know, fix them and lease them again, because else the cooperative is losing more money. Um, so, yeah, the idea is to make a system where everybody has inter interest to make the devices last longer. Um, and of course, you, 
uh, still um, make money in this system. The so producers they still make money, and uh, and uh, if if they want, they can even lease them directly. Fairphone began to lease directly their devices in the Netherlands. Um, so they still make money, but of course it's way more sustainable because because they have interest to to you know to fix the devices. They will create modular devices, and you can fix if it's modular. You can fix the broken devices with the spares coming from other devices. So not on, on, not only it is more ecological because you don't have to produce the spares again. You can just you know use the spares of broken devices to fix the other devices, but it's also more economically, more economically because you, you don't have to pay for them. So not only it's, it's, it's more sustainable, but it reduces the cost of the companies. Um, and uh, at Common, we decided to do that um, in the frame, legal framework of the cooperative uh, to put everyone around the table, right? So the, the clients can be um, members uh, in our cooperative, but also the producers and the, the investors. Um, so maybe the most interesting part is uh, the produce with which we work. So most of you may know Fairphone, the most uh, known modular smartphone in the market from the Netherlands, but there is also uh, producers in Germany, actually, Shift Fund. I don't know if you know them. They are uh, in uh, close to Frankfurt, and there is a French producer, Crosscall. And from the laptops, Y is from uh, Switzerland. Uh, Nagar IT, it's a it's a mouse. It's also from Germany, and you can also you know it's completely modular. Um, and for a headset, there is Jira Street and Sennheiser that you know. Um, so yeah, just a very short demo, like normally with a headset, when the jack is dead, you have to throw the whole things away, right? And here, just put it away. If you have a false contact, you just change this piece here. And you put a new mic with a, mi uh, a, new, a new jack with a mic if you need to do home office. So uh, you see, it's, it's, it's smart because you can also c customize, right? In the future, maybe, you will never change phone any anymore. You will just add new component like you do on a on a fix, right? Uh, computer. Uh, and it's not only more sustainable, more economically. It's also uh, there is also a lot of advantage for the client because all is included in the price. Uh, if you need a new, if they need a new battery, if they need a, you know the phone is, is uh, the screen is broken. Uh, if they have any problem with software, hardware, they just send us a message and it's already the support is included in the price. And it's the same for companies. So for companies it's super interesting because they don't have to hire a technician, you know. They, they pay, they don't have to buy the devices and uh, they know that if any problems happen, uh, it's, it's already included in the, in the, in the price. So yeah, that's the kind of service we propose. Uh, so anything break, uh, configuration, battery replacement, there is also the insurance if it's stolen or lost. And uh, actually you pay to have someone, so to have something which works, you know. So yeah, if at some point the phone really doesn't work anymore, we'll just replace it. Um, yeah, and that's the, that's the, the price. Um, I don't know in, in English, uh, Gestaltung, yeah? So each year you pay less and less. But you keep the same level of, of services, of course. Uh, and that's some example of prices for the B2B. So you see it's, it's, it's uh, reasonable, so to say. Because of this circular business model, uh, as I said, it's also reduced your cost because uh, we focus only about on a few devices, and so we can fix them with the spares coming from broken devices. So auto spares, we don't have to buy them again. So it's quite reasonable, pricely. Um, yeah, that's a few articles and things we, we, we got. 
a few of our clients. Uh, it's interesting actually what, what uh, Common is doing because we are showing that uh, this model works. Um, the big players, they did it, Xerox did it for the printer, the B2B printer. Like you, if you are a school, a company, you want a printer for Xerox, you don't buy it. They put, it, the pr they put the printer at your disposal, you pay Procopy, and they uh, redesign the all printers, you know, so they are modular between each other. So they just, when it's broken, it still, uh, it still belongs to Xerox, and they just put the part which is broken, replace it with, you know, another part. And so it, it, it's, they really can, they, they write in their sustainability report that they spare, you know, tons and tons and tons of raw material every year, which is true. And the last iPhone, I don't know if you've seen, you can open it uh, back and forth. So, you know, also the big players, they are conscious that there is a problem with resources. For Apple, for example, you know, the people buying Apple, they are trapped in the ecosystem whatsoever. So instead of uh, buying a new iPhone every two or three years, you know, Apple could just make them pay monthly and redesign, you know, the whole production line to make it modular. I guess that that's what they should do, you know, just on a on a logical point of view. And I think that's also what they what they what they will do at some point because uh, there will be a problem with uh, with the resources with China when you look at you know 90% of the raw material they are produced in China and now with the uh, geopolitical context, um, yeah, I mean, you know, those people know about it. Um, yeah, exactly, and if you um, want to know more about Common, we are based in Strasbourg, um, so now in France, Belgium, Germany, soon Austria, Switzerland, and um, exactly, you can uh, go on our website or ask me questions if you want to know more about it. Um, yeah, do you have any questions? Uh, it's very interesting, Sharon, especially as a using model for consumer confidence. Maybe it works, so I'm. Yeah. <laughs> There was one because there was a German company that contacted us for that. They wanted to do routers as a service, etc., for schools, and so we did a small, you know, market study. And actually, there is a brand from Switzerland, and they do that, like uh, routers as a service, etc. And yeah, so it already exists, and I think they are quite successful. I don't remember the name of the company. I can check afterwards. If you you can send me an email and I'll check if you if you are interested. I can find find it again. Yeah. 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 And um, so I was just wondering how much, how big of a percentage of the original product can actually last, like five years or 25 years? Like, do you repair the parts and then put them in other devices? Like, or can you extract the material more efficiently now that you can replace just the screen? Can you maybe then retract more of the resources? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like I don't know if you've seen a, a fair phone inside, I show you, but you, you can open it and it's like a puzzle, right? There is mm. seven modules mm. 
And uh, if you adjust your mic is broken, you just change the mic, right? If you, need, if you adjust the battery, adjust the battery. Mm. Uh, so your question is very interesting because as you said, you know, if you knew, for example, what they do in America to force people buying new phones is that they slowly uh, disconnect the 2G and soon, you know, the 3G so that you, you don't have internet no more with your phones. So you have to buy a new one, you know, compatible with 4G and 5G. It, it's mostly pushed by the, the, I mean, there is a technology part we can speak about, but it's also software plan obsolescence uh, to force consumer to. So that's where uh, regulation is so important because somewhere in the regulation, we, we, we have to go further that it's already banned, you know, uh, op, uh, op, uh, software-based software uh, plan obsolescence. Apple has been fired for it, but then we need to go further and you know to also prevent, to consider you know forcing people to to buy a new phone because uh, 2G or 3G are not uh, are not uh, supported anymore that should be also considered as plan obsolescence you know we have to go further but for that as i said you know we need to change the business model because as long as companies uh, rely on on selling to survive you know there is no no other way than plan obsolescence, or selling data, or things like that. You know, which could could think about it. You know, but Apple, um, Google, they also make a lot of money you now with uh, Apple stores and and selling data. Like you know, but you yeah, know. yeah, it's basically a regulation, and that's what I saw. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. Because business model and regulation. Apple, one of the richest companies, can continue to sue repair shops, for instance. Uh, yeah. So uh, then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when um, when you rent a device instead of um, of owning it, yeah. uh, the the owner of the device is the company who. Yeah. Rent, rent it out, come yeah. on in this case. Yeah. Um, that must come with some restrictions to what the user of the device can do. Yeah. What are those restrictions uh, in this case? Yeah. And also, how can we avoid that uh, if, let's say, the, the restrictions are not, are not bad for you, but like when Apple starts uh, leasing their device, yeah. that they keep a remote to uh, basically actually, like they could reset the device at the, at the distance, track you, like it's their device, right? They could yeah. do that. Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, in uh, leasing models, like hardware as a service models, the general condition of, of sales, they are always very, very, very long. Because as you said, you know, you need to, um, because uh, the, as you say, the devices, they still are in, uh, the, the goods of the companies. And so that's why the, the companies have to, to put a lot of, of limitation to avoid abuse, et cetera, you know. Um, so in our case, you know, we have a few limitation about uh, um, most, for example, uh, you are not supposed to, I mean, you can install another operating system than uh, Android 11 or iOS, but then the support is not guaranteed anymore. If you install your own version of Lineage, you know, or, or you try to install, I don't know what, you know, uh, you can do it. But uh, you know we don't provide support anymore because you know it's impossible, um, and there is also limitations on. Uh, uh, of course, you know you can't uh, um, have your phone stolen five times a year. You know, at some point uh, we have to we have to make you pay, right? <laughs> so yeah, all those consideration you have to take them in account. Your question about Apple, like you know who could be able to control the, the phones because, uh, because it's still in the belonging of the company? It's a very good question. And that's a kind of question which has to, to be regulated in the, either by regulation on the law, you know, we say that's not, it's, uh, it's uh, against the privacy, it's not permitted, and also in the general condition of sales. Uh, yeah. Five euros um, issue. Um, so so um, it's a common trend that the software and hardware requirements of, like, let's say, websites 
yeah. require more and more memory, more and more computing power. Mm -hmm. um, so getting more more inefficient um, at in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the guarantee that in twenty in five let's say just five years mm -hmm. um, the amount of RAM or CPU power that the device that you're renting or leasing is um, is gonna be able to handle like the same level of so, like usability to the user as it did five years ago because the same websites now take twice as much memory. Yeah. Um, so do yeah. you also have like plans like okay if the memory requirements are more you can switch to a better memory? What yeah. do you do to the old memory module? It, it's kind of the same question as, as you asked, right? Because uh, it, de it depends on the environment. Uh, that's true, you know. If uh, tomorrow we, we say uh, only 5G is supported, everyone has to buy a phone again in this room, you know. So, uh, so that's why regulation is so important. If you go on our website, it's, uh, it's made in a, it's coded with, a, I think it's called Leo. It's a static website and it's super uh, um, light. It's super fast and it's super light in terms of, uh, of uh, size, you know. But do you think it's similarly possible to regulate all websites to follow the same standard? I think nowadays we are at a point where, you know, with, um, if, if we assume a certain amount of sobriety, you know, what is in, inside here, it's sufficient for common, common use, you know, if I don't want to have HD uh, or 4K video with my, with my phone, you know, and uh, if I don't want to have uh, uh, photos who, you know, are better than a big, uh, big camera, it's okay, you know. So it, it has to do with uh, sobriety, right? And if you want to, to continue to need even more and more and more power and more resources, and then we will have a problem because, as you say, it's, it's impossible then to keep the same hardware or not. I mean, it's more difficult. Yeah, that's a, it's a choice, right? Yeah. We have to make. Yeah. Yeah, Is it enough what we have now? Or, yeah. Or, yeah. So it's more also societal change. Regulation. Um, you talked about uh, indium um, in the beginning. So, what do you do with uh, components that are uh, th that come back uh, to common? Mm -hmm. Because the indium is still uh, trapped in the e-waste. So, uh, does common have plans uh, for better recycling? We work with uh, with uh, producers. Actually, we have a lot of Fairphone Two, which was the older model. Um, and we, so first, we, we out of Android Fairphone 2, we succeed to make 20 of them work again, you know? So we're still going to put them in the market, even if the phone is, I don't know, no, five, six, seven years old. Um, and when it's broken, broken, um, uh, Fairphone asks us to keep them, because they are working on their own recycling uh, strategy and because it's interesting because it's modular you can uh, the recycling rate is a little bit better because uh, for example you know that in a battery you have more lithium so you're going to recycle the battery separately and not to mix it like you know which which is what we do like with iPhone just put <laughs> no no they have these big machines that's true <laughs> sorry um, when they are collected which is not the case thank you Yeah. Why no laptop? Why? Why no laptop? Uh, if we if we, we have also laptops, oh. yeah, it's from the this company. Why? Uh, what is that? It's a brand from Switzerland. But no, there is. I don't know if you followed. There is this project from America called Framework, mm -hmm. and they want to create. A, oh, is it a framework? Wow, amazing. And they want to go as far in the modernity that you can change the main board, which is you know big step because uh, until now, you know you couldn't change the main board of the devices. You know that was uh, the limit point. Yeah. So we hope that we can uh, work with them. You know because we are super interested to. Uh, 
to you know that's that's really the future. Yeah. If I may comment on this, um, like it's it's common that uh, business notebooks are leased, and you can clearly see the quality difference between consumer hardware and business hardware that way because they're meant to be leased and if possible not being serviced during that time period because that costs a lot of money so mm. they are very good quality and they go into uh, into after market afterwards and this is what I always uh, recommend to my friends and family mm. buy a, a professional um, mm. uh, refurbished notebook yeah uh. yeah yeah completely yeah, um, yeah. The thing with refurbishment is that it's good, you know, because again, you you go, it goes in the di good direction. You you make uh, lifespan of the devices longer, but it doesn't solve the problem, which is at the root, which is business model. So you know that's why we say recycling, refurbishing, it's good, but if we don't attack the problem, you know, it's just part of. Um, the strategy of Apple, you know, having a new, they, they can also afford to, to, to bring a new iPhone on the market because they know that the second people, they will buy it and they will sell it on the second hand market. So, you know, it doesn't solve the, the problem at the root. There's also Intel, who does the NUC stuff, you know, the NUC boxes and so on. And there's also a, um, hardware on a ship, basically which mm -hmm. you can put in into a shell, which uh, is basically a notebook. So there are th uh, two or three generations now on a NUC shell, or, or I think they're called like this. Um, you have an empty notebook with only the keyboard, the uh, battery, and um, basic holder for RAM and uh, storage display, and you slot in your CPU and such mm. as a unit itself, but you can also replace it later or change it later. Mm, and okay. um, they, they try to keep um, one or two generations um, from CPU design with the same ship, mm. so you can reuse and upgrade. Yeah. Um, but it's not as much as a framework, yeah. but it's an option that not many people know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really the future, you know, uh, when you can use, you don't have to buy a new phone, you just put more memory, you just put more, you know, better battery, like maybe even a bigger screen, like, you know. So yeah, you, you change your, uh, your CPU and such, and sometimes you can yeah. also change the RAM architecture with that, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um, the difference between the shells itself is often a better screen and so on. Yeah. Can you send me the name of the, of the company? I'm interested. Uh, Intel. Ah, Intel does that. Yeah, Intel okay. with their NUC stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the people working in the industry, they have all those problems in mind, so they are slowly, but it's difficult. <laughs> because you need to change completely the way you do business. Uh, you know, it's not the same job to, to produce and to sell and to, uh, you know, uh, maintain devices. It's different a little bit. Ah, okay. Sorry, a question for your, I suppose, business model or financing. So if you grow, the mm -hmm. more you grow, the more capital you need to acquire yes. more phones yeah. that you didn't rent out. And you obviously have a, a, yeah. a kind of cash flow gap yeah. in the years that people rent your yeah. phones. So how do you, what's the kind of yeah. long-term plan here? Because if you're wildly successful, then you have wildly... Yeah a lot of debt to buy all these phones. Yeah, yeah so the problem of, this, uh, of what we're doing in terms of financing is that it's capital intensive because you need to buy the devices first uh, to be able to... So um, we grown organically as a cooperative. So as a cooperative, you first uh, sell shares, you know, and then you have a, a Stamm capital and you, you go to the banks saying, you know, like a few hundreds, thousands of people buy the share, you know, they're ready to follow me. So, and then we got loans like that. Um, so until now, you know, it, it has worked quite well. Um, 
what is what we will do with producers that are want to do that with us uh, is that um, we buy the, the devices at the cheapest price, but then each month they got you know fees when the devices are rented, and so or from our size it's less capital intensive, and from their size they have a, also a benefit to make the devices last longer. Because as long as the devices are in rent, they touch like, you know, fees, very fees. So you can make the whole system actually, you know, uh, smarter, like so that really everyone has this interest to make the devices last. So that's something we, we are uh, planning to do. Uh. Um, I've got uh, pretty much uh, the same question, um, but for uh, your marketing strategies, mm -hmm. um, uh, how, how big is your impact with your company, um, especially if you look at the big players, mm -hmm. and oh. um, what are mm -hmm. your strategies uh, to increase uh, the market share? Mm -hmm. So at the moment we have, uh, I just slide about it, more than 3,000 devices in circulation. Um, um, yeah, so the marketing, you know, you on basically that that that, you know, and and for the for the company uh, to explain that you know support is included, etc., and that actually we touch uh, uh, all the small and medium companies who don't have the, the who don't want to, to pay a technician, you know, who don't want to hire someone to manage the devices. And uh, of course, we explain. Expl it's a lot of explanation, right? Because you have to make understand people why it's interesting. Because when people think about leasing, most of the time they say, "Oh no, it's just going to cost too much. You know, it's just a way to to make me pay." You know, like uh, for. Yeah. Um, so you have to explain a lot. Explain why you know the the model makes sense and why it's actually you know the the only business model who will who can be at the same time sustainable and uh, and uh, rentable so so yeah we have to explain a lot you know but it it changed slowly you know because everybody gets aware of that so now we have uh, t uh, lots of requests from journalists like we will be on the german tv etc you know yeah but we have to explain 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 and and yeah you know, um, yeah, marketing is explanation and that, <laughs> I would say, yeah. Also researches, you know, we have a lot of students interesting to, to do researches on that and it's a big part of marketing, you know, to show with figures that uh, it's more sustainable. Uh, like, uh, it's really a big part of soft soft marketing researches. Okay, then maybe for last question because it's uh, yeah. <laughs> I was continuing to think uh, which companies would be interesting to be involved in this idea. Like I'm thinking of say for instance Philips because Philips is a company making a tons of different products and not yeah. all of those products need the same computer or the same capacity or processor power or such but they use electronics in almost all their like smart devices right so would it do you work with any company that sort of reuse components for different purposes so you don't put it back in the phone you put, use the processor for a I don't know a dishwasher or a yeah. something else not yet but that's clearly the future it's clearly what we would like to achieve with the uh with our partners, you know, that they, for example, even if, for example, if you, that's a Fairphone 3, uh, I can put any of those components in the Fairphone 4, you know, and there is a research gap here, clearly. We should be able to to fix a Fairphone 4 uh, with some components of the Fairphone 3, you know, it should mm. be possible. Mm. I know that chief phone, they are more innovative in this way. They want to do something in this direction. So, you know, we mm. yeah. <laughs> encourage them. <laughs> it seems to, to be it. a gap between like the private consumer market and like you call the... I mean, I'm thinking, for instance, uh, 
most um, digital things like escalators or whatever, they use mm -hmm. microcontrollers. And those are often yeah. quite standardized. Like, yeah. I don't know, you can, with an Arduino, for instance, control yeah. so many different things. But maybe if you, I don't know the answer, but you can check, maybe Xerox do that for the yeah. printer. Mm -hmm. Because they have interest to be able to put a CPU for any printer on any other one, you know, mm -hmm. to fix them. So they may be at the stage where, uh, you know, them because it's in their interest, mm. once again, you know, mm. yeah, they make money because they can do that. Mm. So they may be quite advanced on the on the topic. Xerox is uh, in the research, in the it's a uh, study case, you know, the number one for for this business model like modularity and product as a service. Xerox was uh, the pioneer, so it's it's documented. So. Have a look if you find the answer. I'm interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have some flyers if you want to, you know, have uh, more. Uh, I there it's in my bag there. Yeah, exactly. Is there any other question? Or do we stop here? Or you, you can also come to speak to me afterwards if you want. Okay. If there's no other question, I would have a quick question. Um, are you planning to also lease the devices at your suppliers and that, so that they can lease the materials or the components so that this leasing is going up the supply chain? Um, we go the other way around, as I said. The, 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 the producers, they uh, sell us the devices at the cheapest price and we uh, we give them fees, you know, when their devices they are leased, you know, as long as the devices are leased. So you are not planning to only uh, lease the devices already at the from the producer. Like for example, Swap Feeds is now leasing the tires. They are not buying the tires for their ah. bicycles. But they are doing the product yeah. as a service uh, in the supply chain. What we do goes in this direction. It just uh, you put the you know if we buy plus fees or if you lease completely. F for the moment, we are at buying plus buying cheaper with a leasing component with fees. But yeah, that's the, that's the complete you know that's the, that's the extreme. I mean extreme. Uh, yeah, exactly. If you do it until the end, if you push the model until the end, that's what uh, you do completely. Which is, I think, the good way to do because so you know everybody has has an interest to in the thing if you if you keep some actors out of having this interest to make the devices long, last long it can work so yeah that's that's a good direction to go i guess okay then yeah thank you very much big applause <laughs> thank you